So let's jump in. I think you'll be surprised at, at how some of this stuff ends up working out. So let's do problem number one. We have a potassium ClO4. Okay, so this is a, uh, this is a compound. We've got uh, potassium atoms in there, we've got chlorine atoms in there, and we've got oxygen atoms in there. And so, uh, you know, if you just look at it, if you look at the periodic table, you're going to say to yourself, okay, well, uh, potassium likes to have charge of plus one, chlorine likes to have a charge of minus one, and oxygen likes to have a charge of minus two. That's what we would typically say from what, everything we've learned up until this point. Some of those answers are going to be right, but one of them is not going to be right. So if you just go from your gut instinct, what you think should be, you're going to be wrong a lot of times. You have to use the method that we've outlined here. So the very first thing we do is we go and we look at the, um, the, the priority order. Rule number one says for atoms in neutral uh, molecules or whatever, the sum of the oxidation numbers has to be zero. And rule number one applies here. In fact, rule, rule number one is always going to apply uh, because we're almost always going to have uh, we're almost always going to have uh, neutral atoms here. So the way that I want to put this down is I want to say, I want to put an asterisk here, just to kind of remind myself. Uh, what I'm going to say is that the sum of the oxidation numbers is going to be equal to zero. And in parentheses, I'm going to put rule one. This is not something you have to do, but what I'm going to do is write down what I'm doing and I'm going to put the rule that I'm using so that if, you, if you're on a test and the teacher sees that you know what rules you're using, then you can get some partial credit if you don't get the final answer correct. All right, so I like to do that, plus it also reminds me of what I'm doing. So I've done rule number one, okay, and then I go down and look for rule number two and I see does rule number two apply? Well, it says in compounds group 1A metals have oxidation number plus one. Um, what we have here is uh, this guy, and this guy is in column number one. So it is a group 1A metal. All right. So I'm going to put an asterisk here, and I'm going to say that for potassium, K, the oxidation number is plus one. All right. And I'm going to write down to myself rule number two. Okay, because rule number two applies. All right, now the next thing you have to do is look and say, okay, do I have enough information to find all the other oxidation numbers? Well, I know the um, oxidation number here, and I know they all sum up to give me zero, but I don't know what chlorine is, and I don't know what oxygen is, so I don't have quite enough to um, do the final answer. So I go down and I say, do I have any group 2A metals, right? I don't have any, anything like that in there, so I skip over that. Let me go to step number three, or rule number three. Do I have any fluorine in here? And I go over here and look and I say, I don't have any fluorine in there, so that's not a, not a big deal. Then I go and look at number four. Do I have any hydrogen in here? I go over here and I don't see any hydrogen, so that doesn't apply. I go down to number five. Do I have any oxygen in here? And oxygen would be a negative two. I do have oxygen in here, so I put a little asterisk and then I say, the oxygen is negative two, and that's rule five. All right, so then I go back and look and see, do I have everything needed to find everything here? I know what potassium is, because that was given in, in the rules here. I know what oxygen is. I don't know what chlorine is. So I'm, I think, okay, a lot of students will think, okay, well, I'm going to go and keep looking. So I'm going to go keep looking down here and down here. Eventually, I'm going to get down to the group 7A nonmetals, and I'm going to see that they have oxidation number negative 1. So I might be tempted to put for chlorine negative 1 here, and say, okay, I've got all the um, oxidation numbers, but you would be wrong, okay, if you do that. Because, believe it or not, even without going to the bottom of this list, I actually have enough information here to find the answer. And the reason is because I know what, uh, what uh, potassium is, I know what oxygen is, and I know that the sum of all of these oxidation numbers in this compound have got to be equal to zero. That is critical, crucial information. So let me see if we can use this. What is the oxidation number of, cal of uh, potassium here? We just said it was plus one, so I'm gonna say, okay, one. What is the oxidation number of chlorine? I don't know what it is, so I'm gonna add to it, just, I'm just gonna put Cl there, because I don't know what that oxidation number is. What is the oxidation number of oxygen? Well, it's negative two, but I have four atoms here, so I have to say four atoms times negative two for each one. 
and all this stuff has to be equal to zero. What I am doing here is I'm applying rule number one, which is the very first rule in all of these things. All right, so I, I found rule number one, I had, I had to use this rule, I had to use this rule, but when I get down to this point, I can write like a little tiny equation there and I can figure out what chlorine is because the sum of these guys have to be equal to zero. So what I do is I say one plus CL, four times negative two gives me negative eight is equal to zero. And then I have CL minus seven is equal to zero because negative eight plus one gives me negative seven. And if I move the seven to the other side, then chlorine is plus seven. So what I have found is the oxidation number of chlorine is actually plus seven. So the way that you write this down for your answer, or you can do it any way you want, you can circle them, I guess, but a lot of the ways that you'll see it is you'll see the compound rewritten KClO4. And the way I like to do it is I like to uh, draw a line from the potassium and you just put plus one up here, put the line from the chlorine up here, and you put plus seven up here, and you put the line from the oxygen and you say negative two. So when you have lines drawn like this with plus or minus signs in front of the numbers, everyone's gonna know that these are oxidation numbers and that's what, what you have. So if you like, you can circle these on your paper, but this really explains and shows that you found every element's oxidation number and here they are. And notice that the sum of these guys, the sum of these oxidation numbers um, is zero. But you have to take into account the, how many atoms of each you have because when we say that oxygen has an oxidation number of negative two, that means that every oxygen atom in there has an oxidation number of negative two. So you have to go negative two times four. That's gonna give me negative eight. So I'm gonna have negative eight from this. Here I'm gonna have positive eight when you add these together and when you add all that together, you're going to get zero.